Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us in gold fundamental and technical analysis. I uh, hope you're all doing well and for those who were expecting a video last week, I actually did record a weekly video but unfortunately the sound did not record and so uh, I was a bit strapped for time so I couldn't record another video so my sincere apologies for not having uh, last week's video out but we're back to the analysis uh, for this week for the YouTube guys for you uh, who are watching on YouTube and for those of you who are uh, part of the uh, mentoring group I have uploaded uh, the fundamental uh, more in-depth fundamental analysis video um, and that's analysis from um, you know the banks and stuff and then um, also as well the weekly technical analysis video as well as um, the uh, group calls, the live group call recording that we have on Wednesday, as well as all the other um, videos that I've done throughout the week from feedback to setups, etc. You've got them all here um, for the month, etc. So all the videos are here, tons of videos for you to watch. Anyways, uh, getting into uh, the week ahead, 3rd of July, and this is from tradingeconomics.com. Um, next week, the payrolls and FOMC minutes will be taking the headlines in the United States. This will be followed by the release of ISM manufacturing and services, PMI factory orders and foreign trade data. Additionally, S&P Global Manufacturing PMI will be published for Switzerland and Canada. Um, investors are also eagerly awaiting inflation rates for Switzerland. Uh, furthermore, focal points for investors will include Australian interest rate decisions, I think that's on Tuesday, uh, Canada um, employment data, China Caxing, I think that's how you pronounce it, services and manufacturing PA, PMI and Japan Tankan Manufacturers Index. So uh, quite a lot going on this week. Um, some market moving um, news. And so let's go to uh, the charts and uh, some more fundamentals and starting off on the dollar index, the DXY. And um, just looking at really what happened on Friday, which was that the Powell's favorite or favored inflation gauge for services hits a 10 month low so a measure of core us core inflation prices that, f that the federal reserve officials are watching closely posted its smallest advance in uh, sorry since july of last year the reason why that's important is because it really kind of determines how much um, the federal reserve are going to hike and if inflation is already coming down then the central bank are less likely to hike and not just the Fed talking about, you know, inflation coming down globally, um, then central banks will definitely look to pause rather than hike rates. And so on Friday, we had PCE data come out and uh, pretty much uh, it was a situation where um, it came out lower than expected. And so what we saw on the price chart for the dollar really on um, on the Friday was a bit of a move to the downside. The dollar kind of sold off across the board. Um, it come up into that supply zone and sold off from there. So um, the dollar not looking uh, great at the moment, but there is uh, non farms uh, this week. And so also another measure of how the economy is doing, but also inflation is um, employment. Now, um, there is something called the Phillips curve. You can Google it, but basically what it says is that when employment, or I should say unemployment and um, goes down, unemployment goes down, inflation goes up. And when unemployment goes up, inflation comes down. And so they have an inverse relationship. And so what the Fed is hoping, in fact, is that um, unemployment starts to uh, go higher meaning that employment comes lower and that hopefully should also um, affect inflation and get inflation closer to their two percent target and so um so yeah let's see um I think that's really going to be the determining factor as to whether the dollar is going to follow through because then if that does occur then the fed are less likely to hike which then the market will start to price out their uh two fed hikes because according to their dot plot 
um, they expect two more hikes, but they won't have to if inflation is, you know, is coming down, right? So, um, so there's that. Uh, moving on to the dollar yen, and the dollar yen has just been going higher and higher, mainly due to yen uh, uh, weakness, and this is because the the Bank of Japan are really the only central bank that are not looking to hike. Ueda, who is the governor of the Bank of Japan, is very dovish. Um, but what there is, and what's you know been quite interesting, is that the yen, um, the yen weakness um, two, and it weakens to one four five per dollar and nears twenty twenty two intervention levels. So yen falls to lowest level since November on yield differential, and Suzuki reiterates uh, to respond appropriately to excessive moves. So Suzuki, I think he's the um, minister of finance. And so there's a 145 level, right, which basically we kind of touched uh, last week. Um, and that is seen as a, a, a kind of line in the sand when it comes to the amount of weakness that the Bank of Japan will tolerate um, because they don't want um, the, the, the yen to weaken too much. Uh, no central bank really does like uh, their currency to strengthen or weaken uh, too much and they tend to intervene in the market uh, and try to strengthen their currency uh, if it weakens too much and basically weaken their currency if it strengthens too much, right? And so um, the 145 level was seen as quite uncomfortable but I think maybe 145s to 150 is going to be seen as kind of the line in the sand. But um, reading the article... It says the yen fell through the 145 for the first time since November, nearing a level where Japan intervened last year to support the currency for the first time since 1998. The Japanese currency dropped as much as 0.2% to 14507 amid a reignited focus on the monetary policy divergence between the East nation and its major peers. So there's a again a divergence between monetary policy going on there, um, which is causing the the yen to weaken its decline to an almost eight month low has spurred reminders from government officials that they are watching moves and stand ready to act. So last year, the currency slide towards the 146 triggered intervention and the build up to that were, um, sorry, build up to that there were repeated official warnings. And so again, um, this was from last year, and it was uh, Japan conducts yen buying intervention for the first time since 1998. And that was back in September 2022. And then it followed up with another intervention um, around uh, the 150s, the 151s. And so um, if the central bank is looking to uh, strengthen their currency and intervene, then that's a great uh, uh, I guess uh, entity to have when you're looking to buy also the, the, the currency right and so nobody knows exactly when uh, they will intervene but the higher it goes the more likely it is that they will intervene and so um, there are reasons to actually look to potentially start to scale in to buy the yen again at the moment it doesn't look like you know they um, uh, uh, Wader is um, is hawkish but they want to kind of surprise the market and that's what they did the last time they surprised the market um when they did their first intervention and then the second intervention basically ended up you know pushing prices all the way down to the one third beyond the 130 so that was what's that maybe about uh, 2000 pips right so you've got um uh, you know, if that if the same thing happens around there, there's a lot of uh, um, money to be made if you can time it right. So um, going back to the chart, just keep an eye out really on if prices start to go higher for that um, for that yen for any kind of short trades. In the meantime, if prices do pull back to this um, to this area here, actually, in fact, I'll use this uh, this one here. If prices do pull back to this zone. Um, just naturally and normally, then I think the dollar is probably still likely to be a buy against um, against the uh, the yen. So if it keeps going higher, hmm, you want to potentially look to buy the yen. But if it stays around this area here and pulls back into this demand zone, I think that's going to be a nice uh, 
potential buyer. Of course, you can also look for buyers down here. Nobody knows which zone is exactly going to work. Of course, um, you know you have to wait for your entries, whatever your entries are, and some other analysis that are beyond really this video. But ultimately, um, yeah, you know, either one of these uh, levels to look for a potential uh, buy on that uh, dollar. If um, again the Fed tend to rem are going to remain a bit uh, hawkish, at least if they're going to hike at least one more time. Uh, moving on to the dollar uh, Swiss franc and the dollar Swiss, both central banks are pretty much hiking rates. You've had price uh, pretty much move, um, you know, auction to move sideways as uh, some people describe it. But um, it's just a basically price acceptance between uh, this price here, which was 0 0.901 or 9, sorry, yeah, 901 and 0 0.89 cents. So that's really where prices are, are found, um, you know, buyers and sellers in agreement of what an expensive or bargain prices are. Now, um, not really looking at this pair to be fair, but if you are, then probably looking at either a move back down into this demand zone before looking at long trades or looking at the um, a pullback into uh, a supply zone, maybe somewhere up, up at the highs before looking at a short trade. But um, yeah, the, the Swiss National Bank are pretty hawkish, even though they don't necessarily need to be because inflation is down by a 2% target, but the um, they pretty much are continuing to be quite hawkish on their interest rates. So that should support the uh, Swiss National Bank. Moving on to the uh, dollar CAD. And the dollar CAD did find some support at that demand zone uh, from, from September, 2022 about maybe nine months ago, did react from there. And so we've come up into the top end of this supply zone. Um, and so, yeah, you've got a central bank where the uh, well, both central banks are looking to hike rates. The um, inflation this week for Canada slowed, but not enough to take hike off the table, according to the markets. Uh, annual rate falls to 3.4% and key core measures edge down. GDP and jobs data may still force McLean's hand um, next month and so um, GDP actually came out um, as, as supporting um, a potential uh, rate hike but it, again Canadian inflation slowed to its weakest pace in two years and core measures edged lower reducing but not removing pressure on the central bank for another interest rate hike next month so I think the uh, the probabilities of a hike are maybe around about 50 50 and so uh with that i'm still a buyer of the canadian dollar but just not against the uh the us dollar at the moment i think if you want to delete that level and draw actually another um demand zone around here i think that's uh decent and then what you're looking for if you're looking for a buy on the dollar right then you're looking for pro oh, actually i'll start with the buy a buy on the canadian dollar against the us dollar then you're looking at either a short trade from here or a short trade from um just the zone further up right here now if you're looking for a buy on the uh, us dollar then you have to wait for prices to come back down into this zone and then look for a nice buy trade uh, to the upside but again that would depend on uh, which central bank is the hawkish who's going to be holding first um, and the divergence between the two which I don't really see a divergence between them two so uh, I'm not looking to trade those that currency um, pound dollar so the pound dollar pull back not quite into this demand zone but there is some demand there also as well you do have actually some um, supply right here as well now uh, the pound uh, didn't really have much news uh, last week but um, there was a meeting with the central banks, I think it's called Sintra, and uh, where the Bank of England, the ECB, and the Federal Reserve um, pretty much all met. I think that you're seeing them on the screen right now. I think that's all of, yeah, all of them, Christine Lagarde, Andrew Bailey, uh, Jerome Powell, and Ueda, right? Governor Ueda for the Bank of Japan. And um, pretty much Ueda was the odd one out. So, um, the Bank of England, the headline is, is that the Bank of England's Bailey hints rates may be higher for longer than expected. So um, 
Yeah, he says he says that he's um, always been interested in the market. Uh, that the market thinks the peak will be short-lived in a world where we're dealing with more persistent inflation, he said on the panel Wednesday afternoon. And so um, the UK at the moment have really uh, persistent inflation, which means that the central bank are pretty much forced to continue to hike rates, even if they don't want to, because their mandate is to get inflation down to 2%. And so um, if that causes a recession, oh, then... Um, I guess so be it, right? But at the moment, it looks like the the, the pound should be uh, a buy, at least in the short term, until really those economic cracks really do start to show in the overall numbers. And so um, I think any pullbacks into um, a demand zone is going to be a decent area to look for by trade. Um, and that is also providing that the US um, also kind of ease up and their inflation starts to come down too, right? So if the US inflation is coming down, um, then they're likely, they're less likely to actually high crates. And also if the um, if the uh, UK inflation remains sticky or goes higher, then that's going to be a potential. That's going to be a, say, a potential button, a, a buy anyway for the uh, the pound dollar is likely to be a buy for the pound dollar. So um, that's where you are. If you do want to get short on the uh, on the pound uh, because you believe that uh, the 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 UK economy is falling, um, is going to have an influence on price, then I think any pullbacks into these highs, the 128s, are going to be decent areas to look for any kind of uh, short trades on the uh, British pound. So Euro dollar. Euro dollar um, had a really nice, uh, I say really nice, but a decent trade so far on this. Um, I know that some of the guys uh, got in as well um, at this at these areas, the 108, maybe around the 108.50s, um, end up being a nice profitable stop hunt trade. But um, yeah, when when the uh, data came out for the uh, for the Fed that the um, inflation was coming lower. What we already knew uh, for that week was that the euro area core inflation quickens um, again in a setback for the ECB. And, you know, again, it's described as a setback because the central bank are trying to get inflation down and core inflation is one of the key readings for a central bank. And if inflation, core inflation went up, which it did, right? So underlying gauge rises to 5.4% overshadowing their headline figure, right? The core inflation actually ticked up slightly um, and the central bank is trying to get it down, then it is a bit of a setback for the ECB, right? Because they want inflation to fall. But for for a trader, um, we knew that if inflation is, is, is rising, then it forces um, the central bank to have to high rates. And when you've got a central bank, another central bank like the Fed, who are actually um, may have to take maybe a rate hike or two off the table because their inflation is going lower, then that should push prices higher, which it did uh, on, on the Friday. So the continuation Will, do, will be determined by uh, the jobs this week, right? So if you're in a trade right now and you're long um, and you're thinking to yourself, well, do I take profit or whatever it is, you can be driven by the fundamentals, right? So there's no need to necessarily exit the trade unless the data doesn't support, you know, your... Um, uh, your trade idea, right? So you, the reason why you're going long euro dollars is because you think that the um, the ECB are going to be more hawkish than the Federal Reserve, right? And so that should push prices higher. But if the data comes out and doesn't support that uh, that trade idea, then you can consider taking, you know, the profits that you um, that you have if you haven't uh, taken any kind of partial profits or anything like that. But as we are right now, uh, where we are right now, I would say uh, you've got a, f yeah, I would probably say this is where you've got your um, second supply zone. And when you have, again, wide supply zones like this, one of the things that you can do is look for some support and resistance, obvious support and resistance within that area. And 
uh, to me it looks like there is probably where you've got decent support and resistance so you've got resistance there resistance resistance support there support there resistance resistance so if price does come up here right and you want to be shorting the uh, the euro then you know into that level or just above it i think is decent for a uh, short trade if you want to buy the euro i don't think prices have really proven that there is strong demand just yet so I'm not, i hesitate to put any kind of demand in and around this area and so i would probably wait for prices to pull back down to the you know beyond the 108s to 10782s before looking at going long because like i said for now there's not really strong demand in and around this area but if price does you know prove that there is strong demand then all you're doing is then waiting for some sort of pullback into supply before then going long around here so um yeah at the moment daily supply and demand zones there's nothing there for now there is on the lower time frame though a um a setup around here which i term a cpr so um there is a cpr intraday in this area but again i'm not really going to go into that in this video looking at the euro yen and again we've just seen the euro uh, strengthen against the yen the yen's been weak across the board for months now as they have had a dovish central bank so we also have a demand zone right there now um for me i would say the first area i'm looking to probably get involved um as a buy would be where there is again some support at least some minimum as a bare minimum some horizontal support and resistance within that demand zone so you want to wait for that you know prices to kind of pull back down into that zone and then look for uh, some sort of buy trade there or at the very bottom of that uh, demand zone, I think is going to be decent for a potential buy, of course, you know, buying the euro over the yen, as long as, again, the yen um, and the Bank of Japan don't intervene, right? If they intervene, then uh, all bets are off the table. So um, in terms of buying the, uh, the euro, you'd be buying the yen. So let's see what happens uh, this week. But as it stands, I think, um, you know, the uh, euro is a buy. Uh, euro pound. And so euro pound, um, again, not really a pair that I'm that interested in because, again, two quite aggressive central banks. And then because you've, you've got two central banks, look what happens. You've got really an auction market, a ranging market. You did have a stop hunt above the uh, the level right which basically was right there so this is where the stop hunt was right here but um again not really a pair that i'm looking to uh to, to, to trade uh, because there's no real clear direction i know you can trade this as an auction as a as a ranging market type trade but um I guess it's a bit more difficult to uh, determine how far prices are going to go, you know, fall in your favor, right? Because if if you've got another strong central bank, then it's more it's it's harder for that price to necessarily fall all the way down there. It might just stay here, right? And maybe just auction between that high and that low. So um, the downside is limited. The upside is limited. So um, there are issues there but if you do want to look to trade this then the prices do come down to this uh, demand zone then i think and you do want to be a buyer of the euro against the pound maybe the pounds fortunes might reverse a little bit then that's a decent area to look for any kind of buy trades um australian dollar us dollar and um price did react from that area there um on that demand zone i think that must have been on a tuesday but then there wasn't great news for the uh, um for australia as their cooler inflation bolsters the case for rba to stand pat so consumer prices eased following an eight percent annual drop in fuel costs and currency extends losses to one percent as traders paired back rate hike bets and so because their data came out and inflation again slowed um was coming down um the market assumed at the time that uh the central bank may not hike rates but that has slightly changed and i think that they will hike rates or the probabilities that they will hike rates are um 
are increasing. And so let's see what happens. If they don't hike rates uh, on Tuesday, then you can expect prices to really kind of fall at least down to the 64s. But to me, it doesn't make sense for them to, uh, to uh, pause again. They've already paused once and to pause twice um, is not really something that central banks really want to do. But you never know. Uh, this is uh, it's been uh, uh, crazy uh, fundamentals recently. So um, let's see what happens. But I would expect them to continue hiking. And so um, as hiking, when they do hike, they tend to hike in a cycle. Um, so yeah, I think I think this could be some support if price does. You know, maybe you know, pull push past this uh, supply zone, and probably looking for any kind of pullback into a demand zone before looking at getting long. I think that's probably the the best way to kind of play this. But you know, trying to get in right now, you're in a bit of no man's land in terms of uh, some dem any kind of demand zones. But if you do want to get prepared for any kind of short trades, because if you think you may think that the um, RBA may not high rates, right? And if they don't high rates and prices come up into that supply zone, and I think that's going to be a very good short matter of fact. It's going to be a decent short to get um, short on this uh, currency. So again, it's going to be driven by um, uh, what happens on Tuesday. And Tuesday is there to so the RBA rate decision, right? 5.30 in the morning uh, and then finally gold so gold um, not benefiting from um, you know the recent uh, hawkishness from the Federal Reserve again if the dollar goes higher um, then gold tends to go lower but it did it has found a bit of support at this area of um, demand as well as support right which I uh, put in on the charts um, it must be a couple of weeks ago. So you've got support, support, resistance, support. And so prices have found some uh, technical support anyway. And uh, in terms of uh, demand, that's a nice demand zone there, fresh area of demand. But um, what will drive prices higher, right? So what will drive high prices higher on gold is if the Federal Reserve, um, I guess FOMC comes out this uh, this Friday and is um, you know shows that employment is going down right and and maybe unemployment is uh, is going higher. So that is going to really kind of drive prices. Or if um, the labour market remains resilient and tight, as they say, then you're probably going to see. Uh, you probably might likely see gold actually fall all the way down to the 1840s. So again, prices are fundamentally driven um, by the uh, by the fundamental data. So um, yeah, interesting to say the least. Any pullbacks into supply, you probably might want to start to look for the potential to get involved somewhere around there, or maybe somewhere at these uh these highs if you're looking to uh, short the uh, short gold and buy the dollar right so you buy the dollar uh, gold is like a proxy for uh, buying or selling the dollar so um those are your options and uh, that brings us to the end of uh, the weekly video hope you uh, enjoyed the analysis and um take care until the next video speak to you all soon you're right all so um i wanted to go over um this uh, euro pound trade and it's not a pair uh, that i uh, had on the uh, on my watch list but i thought it was interesting because i know uh, yesterday uh, we were talking about this and i'd highlighted this um this uh, we were talking about this from yesterday um and from the perspective of you know short traders being caught um and short traders stops being taken out but also as well um i was mentioning that um it's it's probably more about the liquidity side of things and so i thought i'd make a video really going over um uh the uh, i guess the basics of liquidity and i guess everyone kind of understands this it's all over youtube um you know liquidity is above the market and below the market but i'm going to I guess talk about this but with the fundamental side of things right and how it actually um, ended up playing out which was in the favor of the fundamental right so you know liquidity is everywhere right it's always above a, a level and below a level but what gives you the extra edge is um and the probability on you know to trade in your favor is if you um, understand what's what's 
maybe should be happening um, in terms of currency strength and currency weakness uh, via, you know, the central banks. And so, um, first things first, you know, this was uh, our typical setup, which was, you know, a stop punt, nice accurate level. And what we had was, let me just get the uh, bar replay tool, right? So you had a nice uh, setup here and price, um, uh, you know, produced a nice uh, stop punt. And as we came down, pre-news right so the news was uh was was due at 12 o'clock the interest bank of england interest rate decision which ended up being uh five percent um they hiked by 50 basis points and uh, the forecast was for a 25 basis point hike so they hiked uh more than the market expected which should be uh more hawkish right should be and typically is um, nothing is a is a one hundred percent guarantee. There are obviously other things that the market does look at, but you would expect that to happen. But this is this is obviously just uh, some hindsight bias, right? So the market, the, you know, the, the smart money was positioning themselves buying for even cheaper, and then you know stop hunted a lot of traders who had their stops placed above the market, yeah, um, in anticipation of uh, buying the British pound because in order to buy the British pound. Um, on the euro pound you have to basically go short right so you're buying the british pound to go short and so um yeah so uh actually no i won't i won't do that so what had happened was is that the smart money was getting in you know uh first right taking out all the retail stops above the market right so next what you have is uh prices go and do something like this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom down into uh, the one minute time frame chart and so not only were they buying here yeah and buying the british pounds are shorting here when it comes to you know liquidity hunting one of the things that you must be aware of is that if there's not enough liquidity below the market then there they will the, the 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 institutions will look for liquidity above the market meaning that at 12 o'clock you had this move here again let me just uh go back yeah we had this move here it was a surprise 50 basis point hike nice surprise everybody is saying buy the british pound which is basically short uh this this currency yeah this currency pair now in order for uh, the shorts to continue, right? There needs to be enough buy orders, which is the liquidity, right? So in order for you to continue to short, there needs to be someone to sell to you, meaning or someone needs to be on the other side of your trade, right? There needs to be lots of buying liquidity here. But the question is, is who is buying in the face of the um of that news right who's willing to buy um you know there might be you know some entities out there but ultimately with such a shock like what we saw an unexpected surprise um the liquidity is probably likely to dry up right to the uh, un underneath the market and so if there isn't enough buying to facilitate selling yeah because as you sell there needs to be someone on the other side of that trade there needs to be a buyer at this price there needs to be a buyer at this price a buyer at that price buyers at that price buyers at that price if there's no buyers there then what happens is is that the, the the market will look for the liquidity above the market so as we start to go forward yeah there's a lot of liquidity above the market. So imagine you sold, you managed to, you know, get in just before, you know, the, uh, the the news came out on the anticipation that prices were going to drop. Your stop loss is also what's a buy order, yeah? And your take profit is a buy order because <clears throat> your stop loss, if you're, if you, if you bought at, let's say 85, sorry, 86.05, um, yeah? And you get stopped out at 86.20, you are forced to buy back at a higher price, which means that you obviously lose. Whereas if you, um, you know, take profit at a lower price than you bought for, then obviously you uh, win, right? Now, technical analysis says place your stop losses here above this level of, um, you know, 
resistance right there and there would have been a level of resistance right there and there's not too many retail traders for example that will uh, place their stop losses you know um, especially on like these lower time frames like the one minute the five minute the 15 minute and even the half an hour uh, 30 minute charts um, will place their stop losses you know have maybe you know uh, 10 15 pip stop losses above a um, or below a level so you would have had traders who would have been getting involved in here with tight stop losses because they like with good risk rewards, not expecting prices to come back. But because all the buying liquidity yeah, is above the market and it's hardly any below the market, these guys are now yeah, either being stopped out or being put under pressure if they don't trade with stop losses, right? And it's, that's the kind of capture side of things. Imagine the, 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 the trader who bought somewhere down here, right? Because maybe they were slipped on their broker. And they, even though they pressed buy here, they weren't filled until somewhere down here. So anyways, you've got stop losses, you know, above the market. And this is what was happening because, again, you know, who is buying? Where's the liquidity in the face of um, in the face of that, you know, uh, uh, that news? And so you also had, you know, savvy traders who thought, you know, what, I'll put my stop losses probably somewhere above, you know, that level there. And so they ended up being uh, stopped out, right? And when you get stopped out, money transfers from the loser to the winner, meaning that, oh, meaning that um, if you, you know, if, if you uh, get stopped out, right, and you went short, when you're forced to sell, right, I'll draw that again in fact, when you're forced to, to sell, right, because you're forced to buy, matter of fact, sorry, if you sold, right, money goes from the loser, which is you, to the other side, who's the, the 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 entity taking the other side of your trade, which is the broker or you know the bank, etc. Right, and so what they're doing is, as a transfer of wealth, first of all happening, and also what happens is is that at the same time, yeah, a couple of things are happening. It allows first of all the entities, uh, the banks, institutions to do what to actually start to short, yeah right and sell into lots of buying now not only are they looking um uh, there are orders being triggered that are going to them there are traders who would have looked at this large candle yeah and thought to themselves well this is a bit of a technical strategy where you don't take the first move to the downside in fact it's a fake out and i want to go long now yeah so at the same time that traders are being stopped out there's a lots of buying liquidity in this area because traders are now reversing their either reversing their positions, yeah, or new traders are getting involved and going, yeah, we knew it was a fake out, let's go long, yeah. Never buy, you know, at the first move, etc. So you also have buying going on, right? Lots of new buy orders, and in order to go long on this pair right you have to buy the euros you have to you know this it's, it's basically demand orders yeah and so there's lots of buy liquidity and who's taking the other side of that who's able to buy for a cheaper price because the entities don't want to buy you know um down here especially obviously knowing that the bank of england have hiked by 50 basis points yeah but retail traders who have no patience or you know have no don't you know uh, understand the fundamental side of things and they just you know very impulsive and fomo into trades you know trying to capture every move um you know are getting um you know stopped out and then they're getting seduced into being the other side of the liquidity which is basically the liquidity which allows the um the institutions to buy yeah at a a better price yeah and so they've now gone long more liquidity there's definitely more buy liquidity up to up these uh this price yeah and then the sooner they got in right then prices start to go against them and so the institutions were able to buy um or short right going into this area so so retail traders have been not caught only down here but now they've been caught up the top and probably being stopped out, right? And so um, the, the 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 smart money pretty much are you know doing what they normally do, and the overall really direction of the market should be, and I say should 
typically, and it's never 100% a guarantee because you know that we're trading the probabilities and trading is all about probabilities. But when you have a 50 basis point surprise hike, yeah, typically, unless there is, um, uh, you know, maybe the central bank, you know, may have been maybe a bit dovish in the speech afterwards. Who knows? There are other reasons why 50 basis points might not be the most hawkish um, result and might not necessarily drive prices in a certain di uh, direction. But ultimately, it usually should. You know, the price really should have went to to the downside overall. And so um, I'll just go up to a, a higher time frame, like the four hour. Right. And this is what you would see and just to kind of forward and this is what eventually happened yeah because again there wasn't enough liquidity for prices to go lower instantly which meant that the market had to then go higher to take out everybody else and eventually you know it went in its direction and so um yeah, fundamentally, it's important to understand what's going on. Yes, you know, I get, you know, loads and loads of questions. Why didn't the pound sell off? Or why didn't the pound, why did the pound do this? Or why did the pound do that on a very kind of short term um, uh, basis whenever try, people trying to figure out what's happening fundamentally? And there's only so much I can kind of go into, um, you know, for, for, for YouTube videos. But from the perspective of, you know, just an overall general understanding of, you know, why prices do what they do in the very, 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 very short term. If you're scratching your head and thinking to yourself, what is going on here? Why isn't price doing what it's supposed to do? Then it's usually you know, uh, uh, just a liquidity thing, right? It's a, it's, you know, there's not enough orders and no one's going to know how much orders are in the market and what, you know, is, is definitely happening and when it's going to happen 100% of the time. But whenever you see something like this happen, one of the factors is the banks are still positioning themselves, um, you know, and they are um, just basically drawing in retail liquidity, other institutional um, liquidity who are maybe none the wiser, right? And then they will push prices to where they want it uh, to go. And so, yeah, so liquidity basics with fundamental analysis, um, the likelihood was for prices to go to the downside and eventually um, it did. It was also helped as well by, I think there was some good news out of the, the UK today with regards to retail sales. And I think there wasn't great news for the uh, for the euro in terms of, I think it was, um, I think there must have been some German, uh, some German news that didn't come out uh, fantastic for the for the euro. So we did have, what was it, retail sales? Yeah, so it was forecasted to be uh, minus 0 0.2, came out as... Um, uh, point three, which obviously was 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 quite helpful as well. So, with that being said, um, there you go. There's liquidity, right? And this is not a strategy per se. This is not okay. This is what happens every time. Um, every situation is different. As I said, nobody knows how much liquidity um, is in the market for prices to do what they do, right? But if you see something like that happen, right, after really good news or really bad news, and price does the opposite. Um, it could just be one of the things to look for is actually just, uh, you know, it's liquidity. Um, let the dust settle. And once the dust settles, there's nothing, if nothing has changed, then you can start to position yourself, in fact, in the direction of the um of the banks and what the news you know came out and it's not again it's not every single news event it's really important news i say this all the time really look towards you know gdp inflation interest rates those are really the three main measures um and, and market moving i guess um uh, news events that will move currency price overall if it's not been priced in of course already this is this is based off of a surprise news event as well right because if the if the news comes out and it's as expected just consider it being priced in and there's no edge there right there's no there's no um there's no, uh, like I said, there's no edge that you can kind of uh, get an advantage of but whenever you have a surprise um, and the market is wrong-footed and these types of things happen, 
then you can always, you know, there's a, there's a way to take advantage uh, of this. Anyways, uh, hope that helps guys. Take care and speak to you soon.